You can be seated. Happy Father's Day. You know, it was a crazy week this week, and it's going to get crazier. It's going to get crazier. Uh, VBS, the incredible race. Awesome. You know, I'm the game guy this year. Again, right? Last year, last year, I, I skinned my shin um, playing at Duck, Duck, Goose with the preschoolers. This, this year, it's going to be safer. There's no preschool game time this year. <laughs> Right? But, 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 but the kids loved it so much. When I wiped out the first time, you know, they giggled and stuff like that, that, uh, that I figured, man, I'm going to really wipe out this time playing Duck, Duck, Goose. You know, I'm chasing this little kid around the corner, and he's giggling. He's, he's getting away from the Pastor Pete. Then I'm going around the corner, and I go, I'm going to wipe out really good. And I wiped out, and I skinned about three inches of skin off my shin. That was crazy. But, but, but you know, as fathers and grandparents, you know, we, 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 we want to... We want to be the hero, right? We, we want to be cool. Uh, we, want, we want that, that, uh, that laughter, those giggles, especially the really small ones. We want to be liked. You know, is that what motivates us? Is that what... Is our motivation pure? You know, we have a Father in Heaven, all right? And he, he loves us, and he desires to be loved from us. You know, I'm sure he loves to hear us giggle. giggle. I'm sure he wants to be our hero. His motives are pure. And he did a whole lot more than skin his shin. He gave his life for us. Please, let's, let's turn to 2 Samuel 21, 19. Love cannot be manipulated. You know, just because we want our children to love us doesn't mean they will. You know, I, I, I don't understand where all this cosmic universe, uh, you know, is all about and how God says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this universe and somehow kind of harvest love out of it. Somehow take this dry dirt, this, this, this mess... And, and harvest some love. But I do know that God gave us options. We have options. We, we can rebel. We, we have rebelled. We've all gone our own way like sheep have gone astray, that have gone astray. You know, like that song says, I don't want a father, I don't want to run. You've broken my resistance with your love. You know, even though Jesus posted, <laughs> I love you on that, on that cross, not everyone will respond as he desired. You know, what, what, what did the Father allow in this, in this universe, in this, in this cosmos, to, to be able to harvest that love from us? He desires our love. That is his perfect will. There's also his permissive will. And I don't understand it all. It, it, but at some point, God allowed his holiness, his, his perfection, to be separated from his creation. With a freedom of choice. It started with, with the angels and then mankind, this rebellion. How did it start? You know, how does it end? You know, last week I left you hanging with a sinister plot brewing that will bring a condition for the future day when the Son of Man is revealed. It's a, it's a plot that reaches from the angelic realm to infiltrate this human realm. You know, we battle, the Bible says, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Um, this plot reaches there. There, there, there were plots earlier that, that were stopped with the flood. Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Israelite campaign into the promised land. And, and, and the Bible reveals it. It was David that took care of the last of the offspring of the Raphaites in Gath. And we read that in 2 Samuel 21, starting with verse 19. 
and another battle with the Philistines at Gob. Elhan, the son of Jer Oregum, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite. This is another Goliath than, uh, than uh, David killed. The Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. Still another battle which took place in Gath. There was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. He also was a descendant from Rapha. And, and this wasn't the only six-fingered and six-toed person in the, in the Bible written. But uh, that's why sometimes I think the statue could have had more than 10 toes. But uh, in verse uh, 21... When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemiah, David's brother, killed him. These four, I didn't list, it, didn't go early enough to get all four, but these four were descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. We're going to turn to Proverbs 25, 2. You know, these were Rapha. Rapha. Rapha means giant. And uh, to, to create a giant. And maybe, you know, we, we, we look at this word and we, we see all kinds of weird things in there. The word is very profound, God's word. It has a simple message of, of the fall and redemption and sanctification and then, and then eternal security in Christ, but, but there is also many things and messages that God conceals as nuggets and mysteries that he reveals. You know, we live in a complicated world. There's all kinds of crazy stuff out there that we don't understand. And in Proverbs 25, starting with verse 2, it says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. As the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Remove the dross from the silver and out comes the material for the silversmiths. And that's what we're kind of doing with the feet of this, this image that Nebuchadnezzar had in his dream. It, it was a mixture of clay and iron. And we're going to try to take that, that mixture and figure out what it is. We're going to remove the dross. Okay? Let's turn to Luke 12, 22, please. And you know, I love uncovering mysteries. And the more we dig into Scripture, and the more we take what Scripture says combined with our experiences in this life and, and what's going on in this world, the more it starts to make sense. The clearer the picture becomes. There was baked clay or dross mixed in iron in the feet of the toes of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Did it represent a mixed race that brought on a condition for the day of the Lord? David took care of the last of the descendants of Rapha and Gath. He started with killing Goliath and then finished killing the last four in Gath. There was a reason David had five smooth stones with him when he ran toward the champion of the Philistines. You know, everybody, why did he have five smooth stones? Did he think he was going to miss? <laughs> Goliath had those uh, four brothers, man. But, but, but you know what? Goliath was a hero, right? He was a hero to the Philistines. He was looked up to, man. He was, he was, he was, a, he was a man of renown. He wasn't a hero to the Israelites, but... You know, we, we talked a little bit earlier about our natural desire to be heroes. You know, I like to make kids giggle. I, 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 I'll lose skin doing it. Yesterday, I, I ran a race in Yuma, and I, and I won it. And, <laughs> and I overheard a conversation, or I should say, a conversation was overheard. Some high schoolers um, were asked, you know, by, 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 by their friends, did you win the race? And uh, they responded, uh, no, some old guy won it. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess I wasn't, that wasn't the response I was looking for, you know. Some old... <laughs> the, the skinny Mr. Clean is what some of the people were calling me. But uh, God our Father. <laughs> do, do I look like skinny Mr. Clean? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we as fathers want to be looked up to. 
God our Father is being a hero the right way. Are we? What, what, what drives us? What, what, what drives the angels? What, what drives the descendants of Rapha? The sons of Anak, the Nephilim, the giants, the men of renown, the heroes of old. They, they want to be heroes. Do they want the same thing? Maybe they want to be superheroes. You know, the, the angels were the first to rebel. Not all of them, but from my understanding, a third of the angels, and all the angels kind of numbered the stars of the sky, so there was tons of angels that rebelled. And a few of these left their place, and we have the activity happening in Genesis 6 and after. The offspring probably started off as heroes, like, like Goliath. But their rebellious hearts that just wanted some love changed to extreme wickedness so that, that it was so bad before the flood, the condition of the flood, that God had to destroy the whole earth, every man, woman, child, animal, except the ones that were saved on the ark. They showed up again on the plains of Sodom. And then in the land of Canaan, where David took care of the last one. Was it the last one? Will they come again? In Luke 17, starting with 22, we read this last week, but I want to I keep building on this. Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, There he is, or here he is. Do not go running after them, for the Son of Man in his day will be like lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But the first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came, destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. The one will be taken, the other left. And we're going to turn to Mark 13, 21. You know, there will be heroes claiming to be Christ. Don't chase after them. That isn't the way Jesus comes next. Jesus, we believe, the Jesus we believe in already spent his time being made flesh and dwelling among us. He already performed miraculous signs and suffered and died and rose from the grave. When he comes again, it'll, it's going to be like a flash, like lightning from one end of the sky to the next. That's how he comes out next. We're not going to be saying, oh, there he is. You know, he's not going to say, okay, I am the Christ. I, I, I am the one to worship. I'm going to put myself in the temple to be worshipped. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to be someone else. Don't follow them. Don't believe it. In Mark 13, starting with verse 21, at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if it were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. I have told you everything ahead of time. And so that's why we need to read this. We need to know what's going on. So we're not fooled. So we're not deceived. Over and over again, the Bible says, don't be deceived. Be on your guard. We'll turn to Daniel 2.41. You know, I told you last week that I'd share some odd archaeological discoveries that place these giants in a physical sphere. This physical sphere. You know, these weren't ghosts or nymphs or some kind of... Some kind of studio thing that, 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 that people just tell stories about. They were real flesh and blood entities. You know, and I don't want to spend too time on, on this mixed idea, but I do want to share some possibilities to think about. I want to stir our curiosity. I want to open up the sinister plot that looks like it will reoccur with a lot of deception thrown in. There's a, there's a picture of uh, some skulls found in Peru. 
They were dated uh, 800 to 3,000 years ago. But uh, here's some skulls found in Peru, okay? They have super huge brain capacity, about, about double our size. Um, they were dated from 800 to 3,000 years ago. Many use these as proof that we've been visited by aliens, okay? In 2014, samples were distributed to several DNA lab labs for testing without saying where they were from to keep any pre preconceived or pre-notions to interfere with the test results. Anyways, from the samples, only the mitochondrial DNA from the mother's side could be extracted. It, and out of the four hair samples, one of them couldn't be sequenced at all. The remaining three hair samples all showed the HALUP group, a genetic population group of H2A, which is found most frequently in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. This is, this is clear in, in, in um, Peru that they found these skulls. And a low frequency of Western Europe. The bone powder from the most elongated skull tested and came back as two T, I mean T2B, which originates in Mesopotamia which is now Syria, essentially the heart of the Fertile Crescent in Babylon. So, so the, these weren't native, native Americans back then. These, these, were, these were from Europe and Babylon, uh, the DNA tested, okay? But they only found half of the DNA from the mother's side. The other half, uh, they couldn't figure out where it was from. The span in the dates that were tested they established, they were established for a while in Peru. Their Indian DNA didn't match, they didn't match the Indians that populated North and South America when it was discovered by Europeans 400 years ago. Some of the schools still had red hair and, and blonde hair that was 30% thinner than Native American hair. It's crazy. But there was some other stuff that was different, that made them different. Because maybe, you know, some people says, well, maybe they were just humans that, that planked their, and formed their heads to be that way. Their, the brain capacity was bigger. And also, there was also missing uh, a regular, um, a, what, what do they call it, a sagittal line. I think it's, I got another slide. It's missing a sagittal, the sagittal suture. Every, every one of our heads got a sagittal suture on it. A regular human, it's missing it. It just doesn't have it at all. Um, this, is, this is supposed to help when, when, when we're formed. Also, there's a, there's a jawline that's, that's in, a, in a totally different spot. So they're, 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 they're human hybrids. Should this surprise us? This is weird, isn't it? Strange? There's more of this crazy stuff out there that misses the radar than most of people. But, but if your radar is on, there's evidence everywhere. You know, a lot of people are, are scientists and, and materialists and, and even, even our politicians and, and the guys in charge. They look at these discoveries and they say, oh man, you know, this is too much for the general public to take it. So actually the Smithsonian Institute, you, they take a lot of these artifacts and they'll say, okay, this is too much for, for the general public to, to take in. And, you know, they'll get depressed, they'll go crazy, and, 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 and so they just dump them out in the ocean. They're everywhere. They're always discovering these kind of crazy things. Even some of the old myths of Hercules, Achilles, Thor, Helena Troy, Cyclops, you know, there, there, there's a huge list in, in, in Greek, Roman, Norse, Hindu, Celtic, and even some of today's mythology. You know, that, that, that they have a background. Are those just myths? Or were they really stories about people that actually existed? You know, in, in this day and age, China just harvested a genetically modified human. This mixing of genes goes way back. Is this stuff all made up? Could these half humans, heroes of old, have a connection with the Nephilim of the Bible? 
Could these appear in the last days to bring on a great deception that has the world following after the heroes and men of renown performing signs and miracles? Deceiving even the elect, if it were possible? You know, Daniel's going to get crazy as we get into Daniel. And, and, and I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just touching on, on some crazy things that, that we're going to get into. Daniel, the book of Daniel is going to expose not only the future events, but some of the sinister conspiracies of a very powerful underworld. For some reason, God, when he created this and he separated his holiness from his creation so that he could harvest some love out of it, he, this is some crazy stuff. And how this world goes and how we interact with the spiritual realm. There's some, there's some interesting things. Even as Daniel interacts with angels and Gabriel and, and uh, who was the other one? I'll get it. We'll, we'll get into it later. Daniel 2, 41. This is just, this is just the beginning. This is just the image of Nebuchadnezzar dreams. Uh, 41, just as you saw the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom, yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. Let's turn to Genesis 6. And, and again, this is a repeat. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is where the mixture got started. This is where it all, all kind of began. And, uh, and the kind of the, the interaction in Genesis 6, starting with verse 1. When men began to increase in number on earth, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any, any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and so also afterwards. So they, they, they came afterwards. We, we see them in Sodom. We're going to get to that. We see them with David as, as he killed the last one in the promised land. But also I think they're in the future. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old men of renown. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on earth and his heart filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, man and animals and creatures that move along the ground, the birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. Please, let's turn to Genesis 14. We'll look, look ahead to that. You know, we looked at the pre-flood Nephilim last week. Today, I think we'll have time to squeeze in the Sodom, the pre-Sodom -Nephil pre Nephilim. And uh, yesterday the clock fell on the floor. So I don't, I, I don't know, I might go overtime today. <laughs> it's just like, God gives me signs, you know. <laughs> Woo! So here we go. Genesis 14, 1. Okay, and this is going to be crazy stuff. A lot of crazy words in there. But, 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 but we're going to pull some yeast out of this dough. Okay, and so we're just going to focus on one, one, of the, one of the tribes here. At this time, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elazar, Kedorlaomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goem, went to battle against Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shineb, king of Adma, Shememur, king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these latter kings joined forces in the valley of Siddim, the Salt Sea. Man, that's tongue twisters here. Um, the twelve year, for 12 years, they had been subject to Kedorlaomer, Ki, I'm not even going to try to do that. But in the 13th year, they rebelled. The 14th year, Kedar, why is that name always coming up? The, the king allied with them and went out and defeated the Raphaites. There's the one I want to, there's the, there's the yeast right there, right there. The Raphaites in Ashtoreth, Karnaim, and the Zuzites in Ham, and Amites, and Sheva in Kariathaim and the Horites in the hill country of Seir, as far as El Paran, near the desert. Okay, we're going to turn forward to Genesis 19, where, where we get to Sodom and Gomorrah, and their destruction, and the angels get into the city. But uh, um, I just want to focus on that one, one group in verse 5. 
they're here. This is this place is the hot spot. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. This 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 valley. This is this was this was like California. All right. I mean, they, the the crops were growing well. This valley was fertile. I mean, this is where people like to hang out. And also, the place was getting wicked. It was getting terrible. This was where Lot went, and he chose this land because he saw it, and it was pleasing to the eye. And then we get to this sinister group, the Rephites, right in the middle of it. You know, the genetics of the giants were, the Rephite, the, the, the name Rephite means invigorating the giants, or invigorating could be stitched together, men to cure, heal, repair, or make whole. Stitch the giants. The genetics of the giants were stitched together. You know, God separated the people with languages just earlier in, in not too much earlier in Babylon. You know, the great Babel. We're going to look at that in, in VBS too. A lot of this. So this is all in line, with the, even with VBS. But, but, but their spreading out was a good thing. Because if these were all in one space, these giants could have corrupted the whole human race just like they had before the flood. And it would have been all over again. But uh, God separated them out. They were all over the place. The humans dispersed. These heroes and men of renown might start out looking pretty awesome. You know, they may save a city or two. These Raphites, man, it's great to have a champion. You know, you know when, 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 there, when, there's, when there's a bully at school, you want the big guy for your friend, right? Right? A champion. And, and that, that's how they might have started out. They may save a city. Goliath was a hero of the Philistines. Something seems to coexist with these entities. Wickedness. Extreme wickedness. Maybe the extreme wickedness was the door or the pathway being of these beings needed to descend to this realm. There, there, there's a word that I was looking for, you know, this sci-fi word where, where one, one realm goes to the other, even, even, even go from, from uh, the past to the future or the future to, our, our, to the past. Uh, you know, and, and, and the word I was looking for, and I was looking for, it. anybody know the word? Come on, guys. Wormhole? The wormhole. You know, but, but that wickedness. The wickedness from the people that, 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 that brought it. Look at, look at what we got today. We got, we got Satanism, abortion, pornography. I, I'm, I'm not even listing them all. Astrology, greed, child sex trade. I mean, we, our culture is, is wicked. How many million babies do we abort? How, how many million kids are stuck in a child sex trade. You know, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're getting close to, to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, these guys had, had set up shop, the, the refugees. Somehow, they found their place on the plains of Sodom. And they don't look to be a threat as, as they are mixed in with all the other tribes enjoying the rich land of this place. But they're like the yeast. They infected this whole place with increased wickedness. And it wasn't long before the stench of this wickedness reached up to the nostrils of God. And God says, I can't keep them. I, 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 can't, I can't hold on to them any longer. I can't allow this any longer. Not only that, they, they probably threatened the seed. Abraham was just involved in, in fighting and getting the Sodom and Gomorrah lot, all his stuff back. And he was involved with fighting these Raphaites right in this passage that we read out of Genesis 14. So, so they were getting close to destroying the seed that God had promised Eve that would destroy the serpent's head. Whatever it was, there they are. And, and now... God says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. In uh, Genesis 19, 1, there's two angels that went down there to, to investigate. And uh, these two angels arrived in Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. Now, these weren't fallen angels. These were angels that God had sent. When he saw them, that's Lot, 
He got up to meet them, and he bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. I'm thinking these guys were recognized. They weren't just regular human beings. They were angels. But I think they were recognized for their their by how they walked and how their stature was and how they appeared uh, for, for several reasons. We'll get into it in a little bit. Three, but he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had all gone to bed, before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house and they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out so, to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went out to the side to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. And we'll, we'll stop there. And we're, getting, we're running out of time, even though the clock is, is gone. <laughs> but, but, but I think Sodom recognized these two visitors to be angels. All an angels that started the Raphaite breed out on the fertile plains of Sodom. You know, they may have had a reputation that the Sodomites were overly excited. Hey, they, they, whoa, here they are. They're in our city. They weren't too interested in Lot or even in one another that night. This was sheer madness, and it was so raw and wicked that God's judgment made this whole fertile plain worthless still today because of the salt and surf, surf, sulfur in this barren ground. I have to end here, but I, but I hope you're all tying this in. This world is prime target for another filtration to covertly bring in a new era of wickedness, seduction, sorcery, and deception. We as a wicked culture are opening the gate, every gate, window, door, pathway, tunnel, wormhole, whatever you want to call it. Next week, we'll cover Israel's conquest in the land of the giants, tie in some crazy stuff from Jude, Enoch, and another short manuscript found with the Dead Sea Scrolls and hopefully move a little further into Daniel. God warns us over and over again, don't be deceived. Guard yourselves. You know, they will deceive even the elect if possible. This is a huge warning. God is in control, but as this world is, is a system that cultivates the love God desires, there's also that option to rebel. But there's also another offer on the table. There's another door to access the spiritual realm in a good way. In a mixed up world, Jesus has a simple answer. Jesus came as God to die in our place, not for us to mix with him or have him mix with us. He died so that we could die with him and be whole and pure in him. We could be born again, new creatures, separate from the old one, new in Jesus Christ, a new creation. Follow Jesus wholeheartedly, and there will not be any room for mixture with anything else.